there's a whole spectrum of phenomena that we call light. They're all electromagnetic radiation. What you normally think of as light is just the visible portion of that, but there's a whole lot of it that is invisible to the human eye. So this picture here, which you have on your notes page, is a representation of what we call the bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's talk about all the different parts of it and how we perceive it and the differences among them. So first of all, at the top, we've got the Hulk. What's the Hulk doing there? Well, he's in the gamma range, right? As the old song goes, Doc Bruce Banner, pelted by gamma rays, turns into the Hulk, ain't he unglamorous? Okay, so uh, now in the real world, if you were to be bombarded by gamma radiation, you wouldn't turn into a raging green Hulk monster. Uh, you would actually probably die because gamma radiation is very, very energetic. It carries a lot of energy and it's deadly to humans. Although it actually is used, first of all, it's, it's produced in nuclear reactions mostly. So the sun, all stars give off gamma radiation to some degree. Uh, however, if you happen to know anyone afflicted with cancer, if they ever undergo radiation therapy, they're using gamma radiation to kill the cancer cells. So they take a very targeted beam of gamma radiation to hit those cancer cells. It's very, very effective. It's also kind of painful, but it can root out those cancer cells. Unfortunately, also sometimes kills some of the surrounding cells. So there's obviously a recovery time for it. Going down the line here are x-rays. You notice that there's really not a defining line between gamma rays and x-rays. They sort of blend into each other in this range over here. Remember, it is the frequency that determines what sort of radiation we're looking at. And so, you know, these uh, going up here is, is gamma radiation with the highest frequencies, and then you go down into the x-ray region. So where do we uh, use x-rays? Well, we use x-rays to image things, right? Uh, the inside of suitcases or your bones, because human tissues and bones and things like that, they reflect and absorb x-rays in different amounts. And so we use them to uh, understand the interior of objects, specifically, of course, you know, at the airport, you want to see what's inside the luggage, make sure everything's safe. And so x-rays can penetrate different materials by different amounts. X-rays are actually produced when fast-moving electrons all of a sudden slam into something and stop. When they accelerate, they lose their energy. They give it off as X-rays. Remember, electromagnetic radiation is always produced by accelerating electric charges. In this case, them slowing down. They give off their energy as X-rays. Going on down the line here, we get to ultraviolet or UV. And you're probably most familiar with this in terms of UV radiation from the sun, right? If you absorb too much UV radiation, what happens? Well, too much, you burn. Maybe a little bit, you get a suntan. Now, what's actually happening is you are literally burning your skin, which is why it's painful when you get a sunburn, right? Your skin turns red, and then eventually it cools off and it turns brown. It's pretty much the same thing as putting a piece of bread into a toaster oven and toasting it, right? It changes color because you're burning it. That's what's happening. Now, unfortunately, every single time you absorb UV radiation enough to even uh, give yourself a suntan, you increase the chances that you're going to mutate some of your skin cells, which means you're increasing the chances of getting skin cancer, right? And so if you're outside for more than an hour or so on a sunny day, you really should be wearing sunblock to block off the UV radiation. And of course, towards the end of the year, when you know prom approaches and people go to the tanning salons to absorb UV radiation to get that nice tan, well, you kind of have to weigh your options, you know, how good do you want to look versus how long do you want to live? I know it sounds a little bit morbid, but in reality, like I said, you really are in increasing your chances of getting skin cancer the more UV radiation you absorb. Okay, then we get to the visible spectrum, which is actually a very narrow portion of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. It's so narrow, they had to uh, blow it up here so we can see the color spectrum, red through violet, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Notice that indigo is noticeably absent. Turns out the frequency range for indigo is very, very narrow. And so to tell the difference among blue, indigo, and violet didn't make a whole lot of sense. So the powers that be, the people who publish these sort of things, decided that they just wouldn't name the color indigo anymore. Now, it doesn't mean it's not there, right? You shouldn't go to your Crayola box of crayons and throw away your indigo color crayons because the color still exists. It's still in the rainbow. We just don't name it anymore. So instead of Roy G. Biv, like I'm sure you all learned, I guess it's Roy G. Boof right? Because there's no indigo color named it anymore. And so you see that since this is in order of frequency, higher frequencies toward the top, lower frequencies towards the bottom, violet has the highest frequencies, red has the lowest frequencies. This also is given in terms of wavelength, because sometimes the numbers for wavelengths are a little bit easier to know than the frequencies. Uh, if we were to put these numbers in nanometers, which is a convenient unit, 10th negative ninth meters, the wavelength for violet would be around 400 nanometers, and for red, this is 750 nanometers. Although 
the more typical range of wavelengths for light, for visible light, I should say, is between 400 and 700 nanometers. Most humans, on average, can see between those wavelengths of light. So those are good numbers to know, the visible spectrum between 400 and 700 nanometers. And of course, what do we use visible light to do? We use it to see, right? Because we can't see any other bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. Going on down the line, here we've got infrared, something you'd probably be familiar with. Do you know how we experience infrared? We experience it as heat. So anything that gives off heat that you can feel without actually touching it, you're actually absorbing infrared radiation that is emitting and it's going through the air to you. So for example, if you build a fire and you want to warm yourself by the fire, you're not going to stick your hands in the fire. That would make a lot of sense. You'd burn, right? Instead, you put your hands near the fire and you still get heat from it. You're actually absorbing infrared radiation from the fire. Infrared radiation is also often used in the food service industry, maybe in the fast food uh, lo locations where they prepare the food ahead of time and then they want to keep it warm. So they put it under these infrared lamps, which are heat lamps, and they keep the food warm, ready to be purchased later. Also, uh, remote control beams are usually carried on infrared radiation beams. You can't see it, right? So when you press the remote for your DVD player or whatever it is you're using, maybe your DVR, um, and, and you can't see the beam because it's carried on a beam of infrared light from the remote control to the receiver. Going on down the line, we've got microwaves. And what do we use microwaves to do? Well, if you said to microwave things, that doesn't really help, right? They're used in microwave ovens to heat up food. So whenever you're heating up leftovers, do your parents ever tell you to maybe sprinkle a little bit of water on it? Yeah, it turns out they know what they're talking about, just like they know what they're talking about when they tell you to put sunblock on to block the UV radiation, right? Uh, it turns out that the microwaves have a frequency that happens to match the resonant frequency of water molecules. And so the water molecules absorb the microwaves and they oscillate, they shake back and forth. And of course, as they shake back and forth more and more, they heat up the surrounding material. So when you're microwaving food, you're really heating up the water content of the food. And so if you have some dried out leftovers, you can sprinkle a little bit of water on it and let it seep through, you're able to heat up the food more evenly, not just the outside, but also the inside. So it's good advice. Microwaves are also used for something that your generation pretty much can't live without. That would be the cell phone. Your cell phone signal is carried on microwaves. Now, you got to think about this, right? I know a lot of you probably don't use your cell phones to talk anymore, but if you do, if you're ever on the phone actually talking, what my, my daughter's called an audio call, right? Uh, and then you're on the phone for a long time, you take the phone off your ear, how does your ear feel? Yeah, it feels kind of hot, right? That may be because you're absorbing a lot of microwave radiation uh, it's transmitted from your signal and absorbed by by your phone right and so you're sort of heating up your head and so if you're on the phone for a really long time we might be cooking your brain we don't really know now you also want to think about the fact that these these microwaves are being transmitted and absorbed even when you're not on the phone anytime you're sending or receiving a text or you're sending or receiving information like an update to your app right anytime you're using wi-fi things like that there's always being microwave radiation being exchanged and a lot of you think about where you keep your phones, right, in your pocket, close to some very important parts of you. We may be creating an entire generation of sterile people. We don't really know the long-term effects of your generation using cell phones too much. You just haven't lived long enough, but it'd be very interesting to see what the effects are. All right, our last band on the spectrum is TV, FM, standard broadcast, long wave. We're going to lump this all together in what we call radio. What do we use radio waves to do? Well, if you said to hear radio, that's not correct. If you said to see TV, that's not correct either. You can't see or hear radio waves. Instead, it's used for communication purposes, right? The signal's created at the TV station or the radio station and then transmitted via satellite to a, a receiving tower or an antenna. And then the antenna transforms that information into sound or light, whatever sort of medium you are listening to or watching, right? You can't see or hear these radio waves. They're just used to communicate the signal.